Hey guys, so if you're a fan of K-pop, or if you're just interested in the business of K-pop, it's a coup d'etat, it's a revolution, it's an overthrow, it's a new era, whatever you want to call it, for the former number one K-pop management company, SM Entertainment. It was the juggernaut, like the Harvard of being a K-pop idol trainee. If you ask somebody about 10 years ago, definitely 20 years ago, if they wanted to be a K-pop idol, where was the number one place to go? That would be SM Entertainment. And recently, we got news, confirmation from the heads themselves that there is a major Game of Thrones moment going on right now. And yes, it does not disappoint because there is family K-drama involved in it. The 70-year-old founder, the owner, the guy who symbolized K-pop for Korea has been ousted by his own nephew. And so there's been an announcement about how this bodes for the future of the company and also for the future of the K-pop industry. And we're going to go over their announcement and to kind of really parse it out and see if this is good for K-pop fans, this is good for K-culture investment or people who are really wanting to see the business of K-pop continue because the way that it looked, it wasn't exactly sustainable so it looks like it's going to be more of a sustainable operation but of course with change there's going to be plenty of drama and i wanted to remind you guys that the coupon code for soul light tv viewers is available of course for our led masks and the very relaxing and also very effective eye treatment, the eye mask for the crow's feet, the under eye bags, and also if you want to just get an overall treatment as if you went to the dermatologist and got some Botox done, you can get the LED mask and a lot of you guys who have gotten it have said like you've loved the results and so thank you so much for sending me that feedback and it really does give you a way to cut back on spending on expensive skincare items and just, you know, have better skin to begin with. All right, guys, all that coming up. Stay tuned. So is his own nephew doing him dirty? Isu Man, the legendary founder of SM Entertainment, it's not exactly his nephew, it's his nephew-in-law. It's the nephew of his wife that passed away in 2014, but he is the co-CEO of the company currently. And let's just delve into some of the complaints and the way that it looks like right now so we're going to look at it from the perspective of the people in the company the majority of the people it seems and the co-ceos and the announcement they made and the vision that they laid out and of course this is a good sign you know have you seen a korean powerpoint with all these like you know curly cues and arrows and points and just like you know it's like a textbook that means that is a old school way and so we saw a very fresh kind of like startup type of presentation at least on the first couple of slides then it you know went into a little bit more complex like the old school way but really what they're envisioning is SM Entertainment 3.0. They said SM Entertainment 1.0 was from 1989 to the year 2010, the first stage and the foundation era where you had HOT, BOA, Super Junior, uh, Dongbang Shingi, and Shiny. And then SM 2.0 was 2010 to 2022. This was really like the global expansion era. Not that there wasn't global expansion in SM 1.0, but you were kind of like early to the party and people are just kind of like, you know, like when people are just like, ew, what is that? Is that kimchi? And then suddenly everyone was like, oh, I make my own kimchi at, you know, then you know it's been like globalized. And so the global era was 
when you had acts like EXO, Red Velvet, ESPA, NCT, and they made a point, the co-CEOs made a point that really during this era was when the producers, the artists, the songwriters, the people who were really running the company have gained enough experience and knowledge to be able to take it into SM 3.0. Now, what are they really saying SM 3.0 is going to look like? It actually is going to look a little bit like the way Hybe Entertainment has set itself up. Now, who would have ever thought that Hybe Entertainment was going to be the one to compete with? But that's what happens when you take, you know, too much hubris and, you know, you know, you think that you, you think you're really on the next level, but, you know, you, you were on, you're still on the last one. And the way that Hybe, if we look at their business model, you see that there are distinct production centers, almost as if they're like different brands underneath one big conglomerate. And with each different division head responsible for different artists. And so what we saw, you know, controversially a little bit, but kind of smart, you know, with the whole New Jeans debut, you know, they recruited uh, that uh, controversial producer, but, you know, obviously New Jeans is doing well, but if it didn't do well, then it would be easier to kind of, you know, cut that part out of the overall organization. You know, if the American branch, if some of its units didn't do well, it's easier to cut out. And also it's easier to manage because you give the attention to each individual artist, the amount of effort that it takes to create to a debut and even manage a successful artist, it's a lot of work. Now, the way that SM Entertainment has been running and a lot of you know these companies that are in the old model in Korea is basically one man, one emperor, and the bottleneck is at the top. Everything can be, the complaint was, because they have these like uh, message boards, I think it was called Blind, and this is where the employees go to complain and, you know, anonymously. And they're saying that there is a system at SM to do the work and the operations, but the complaint was that Isuman, the founder of the company, can just come in and be like, nope, don't like it, nope, cut it, you know, and just do whatever he wants like an emperor and a dictator and just negating all of the work and then kind of sending everybody off in a confusion. And it creates a situation where you can't really plan and then... It creates a disincentive to do planning because it's like, well, if I invest all this time, work and energy and it doesn't work out, then why am I doing this? Also, why? Because it looks like they are being severely underpaid. Now, the big part of SM 3.0 is they're saying that we're going to focus on IP, intellectual property, and to make it more fair. And ironically, today there was a big press conference on a on the more general entertainment industry to change the copyright law for artists because artists really are at the mercy of the production company. So it looks like at SM Entertainment as well, you know, if you're like the artist, if you're the songwriter, how do you get compensated? It's really like how much the emperor is going to give you. It basically means like how well your relations are or if you're just under kind of like a salary, then you're just going to be like a slave. And if you're not well compensated, then you're kind of stuck. And it's one of these uh, situations where where else would you go if SM Entertainment is the number one place and... It has all of this, you know, prestige and whatnot, but you're still like struggling to pay the bills and you're just like barely surviving. But then where else are you going, you know, to go? And you can't really go work at Samsung and like, you know, build semiconductor chips with your songs. And so they're sort of stuck there. And so there was a lot of discontent. Now, the way that this press conference was saying is that they were trying to revise the copyright law so that the copyright doesn't just go to the production company and to have it more like uh, 
other systems, including they were benchmarking the United States, where the contracts are more with whoever you make the contract with. Like if it's the director, the director can get a, a cut of the copyright, the songwriters, the script writers. And from my experience in the U.S. entertainment industry, it works because there's a whole industry of agents who profit off of representing individual talent and getting a cut of their royalties. And so there's a real vested interest to make sure that not only does a director get paid an upfront fee, but they get to share in the royalties as the, if the project continues to be a success. So that's what they're trying to do, it seems as if, at SM Entertainment, even without the law. The way that they were stressing the copyright and the multi-label production system was to try to kill two of these birds with one stone. One is that the multi-system, they are basically saying they're going to create five different production centers so that, okay, finally, you know, just silo it out so that... It doesn't depend on just like one big old, you know, kind of one barrel and then have like one producer, the main producer basically being Isuman, the founder, like kind of walk in every now and then be like, oh, I don't like this or this, this, this. And I kind of see like maybe he was out of touch because if you look at a, a recent video, he was like sitting there like lecturing Espa saying like, oh, isn't it unfortunate that nobody likes to listen to disco anymore? And they were like, oh, you know, like totally brown nosing, like, oh, you know, I think disco, you know, there's still some people who are into disco. Yeah, you know, like there's a, you know, neutral retro movement. And so like they kind of have to listen to this. And, they, you know, of course, we've gone over this in other videos, but they call it Gunde style. And that is the public image, you know, just like, oh, yeah, well, you know, but behind the closed doors, they're probably just like, what the heck is going on? And so the problem with not being able to focus on each artist, it becomes like this gross, intense competition to get the attention of the head guy. So remember, even over at JYP, where remember the whole CL thing, where CL was even like having to Instagram publicly to JYP saying like, oh, you know, like, can I get another album or can I get another song? It all depends on like where their focus is and their attention and energy. And the days of the king, the emperor, are long over. It should have been long over a long time ago. And if you just look at even history, I mean, this is why we have the French Revolution and stuff, you know? Even before the French Revolution and even before that era, even before the last Chinese emperor, uh, uh, empress, all of the royal houses were trying to figure out how to create a system where they would be able to share power in a parliamentary system. Why? If you have ever seen that show Versailles, there's a great line, a great quote saying like, no man or one man can rule a nation. He will drown in it. It's just too big. One person cannot rule such a big entity because it is literally impossible. And I think this is a very smart system that they're implementing and being very practical. And it just is not even that revolutionary it's just good business practice and so what they want to do is to have each center manage artists within their own center and be held accountable for the results of each center and what does this mean for k-pop fans well this is going to be a little bit surprising maybe i don't know if they're going to be able to do this but they really want to be able to release three three artists three groups a year and actually this year four but 
One of them is going to be a virtual artist. So SM is saying that they're going to double down on the metaverse. So there's going to be five production centers, but then there's going to be an extra production center that's strictly like AI, VR, AR, digital. Like, you know, we've seen like some experimental uh, things with the ESPA music videos. And then also I believe there is like one virtual in Korea, a virtual K-pop star out there. And so they are doubling down on this whole metaverse thing. And so they're trying to release four under this new uh, production system. Now let's go back to this IP thing that they're talking about is that they want to be able to have all of their IP owned in house and not have it offshored. Now, the way that SM Entertainment has been run recently, it's been a little bit kind of like an accounting maneuver and sort of like a power shift with the founder so the founder a few years ago even was saying like you know this is sort of i guess in a way he was also trying to figure out a way to transition you know out of being the emperor but still share power but still hold all the power he created his own production company and he said okay i'll step down as ceo and then you know you know nephew-in-law why don't you be the ceo and he probably thought you know he could control him and then i guess they had like a co-ceo situation but all the production still had to go through his production company which meant all the money all the contracts all the rights still had to go through his production company so who really was the owner who really was the one in charge would be still the founder and the problem though here is is that i always say like hey if you're going to run a Korean company or any company in the world, like you're the emperor, then fine. Own 100% or at least 51%. But the thing is, he sold off a lot of the company to investors who were like, oh, K-pop, you know, let's try to make some money off of K-pop. SM shares are sold on the Korean stock market. And people were thinking that like, okay, fine. They're going to be able to share in the profits. But the way that it looked out in reality was that this production company was basically siphoning off the profits and really controlling it in a way that was not a, in a typical manner with shareholders, board of directors, because this production company was the one that really held the power and the power was still held solely by the one man. Now, this was kind of like, when you really think about it, kind of a smart move on Isu Mun's part of like, instead of going externally, like a lot of the Korean chebols, they create like a holding company that controls all of the other big subsidiary uh, other companies that you know they don't call themselves really subsidiaries but are on the uh, open on the trading of the market um they're on the stock market and then they own majorities of those through the holding company what he did was kind of like in the reverse like internally but what we've seen now through the there was an achilles heel in that situation is that his nephew and it seems like the people within sm entertainment were able to find a way to oust the founder in this situation by what getting the board of directors to then issue more shares and bring in cacao you know cacao talk cacao entertainment to buy up shares and to therefore even more decrease the share percentage of isuman isuman right now still has the most amount of shares but it's still only 18 percent cacao talk says that they're going to buy about nine percent but that's nine percent after a, a share dilution so it's not really clear like after the final tally whether isuman will have 18 percent Nonetheless, the company is run by the board of directors who are supposed to represent the shareholders. And it seems as if HYBE may even be in, 
like considering buying shares into the company. So Izumon is in a real pickle right now because he is being kind of challenged and attacked on all sides. Now, the CFO gave an explanation of the business targets of the multi-label system. And uh, the stress that he made was that they wanted to have a stable release pipeline for artists and albums because wasn't it always random about like you know when are they gonna have an album and why do they always call these albums comeback albums i thought comeback albums were like for artists like in their 50s or 60s or something like you know these like these like young kids who are not even didn't even turn like 23 are already having like a comeback album because I think it was so haphazard in terms of like when they were going to come back and suddenly they're coming back. So they're like, this is our comeback album because there was so much chaos and lack of planning. And so with this planning and analysis, you have to start right because they're music artists. You start with the album. With the album comes planning for the concerts and the opportunities for endorsements and so it basically creates a stronger business environment because the k-pop artists are supposed to have music and if you cannot create a dependable production system for the music then you can't have all of the rest fall in line you know i just kind of think about like how fortunate in a in a strange way Blackpink was like they they didn't really release a lot of music but they still got a lot of commercial you know endorsements and they were able to you know really create some sort of uh career despite uh kind of a spotty you know music releases but that I think is more of the exception rather than the rule. And so this really helps. So they're going to debut more than two teams a year versus one team debuting every 3.5 years. That's how that's how slow it got at SM Entertainment. One every 3.5 years. They want to have 40. Now this I don't understand. 40 per year album capacities not as if they're going to do it but they want to be able to pump out 40 albums per year and of course this also comes from their mature artists their artists who are already in the pi pipeline not you know only debut artists so they're gonna build a real big roster of artists if you're gonna debut like three every year and so yeah i guess you can if everybody wants to do one a year one every two years there's gonna be a lot cranking out of this machine so they also want to do pre-announcements for album and artist activities so people and their business partners can make plans now at the level of SR entertainment the fact that the pre-announcement has to be a business goal that's like part of their revamp does say something about how this company has been managed they're predicting album sales of 18 million in 2023 versus 14 million in 2022 so already they're predicting a 30 percent increase and they're saying that IP creation is important, but more so is its monetization. So when you're able to silo all of these business functions, create a fair atmosphere, then people can really focus on creating the art, creating the business, and then monetizing. So it becomes like a real powerhouse that you know it's supposed to be and so there's going to be more announcements later this month and in march regarding how much more they're going to be uh, monetizing but part of this whole in terms of like the money part is that they are also stressing that the sm employees can be part of shareholding in the labels they're, they're also thinking of creating this pipeline where they can create 
indie labels within SM Entertainment and SM employees who have been working and toiling can also become shareholders. So again, it's part of that whole thing about the whole, you know, the unfair copyright law where basically it all just goes to the production company and the CEO of the production company. He can do whatever he wants and then he can just dole out however much money, just sprinkle some coins on people or not. And not waiting for the law and just say like, okay, we're going to try to retain the talent. So this, this looks like it's a way for people. So the SM is not going to lose people, you know, to Hybe or to other entertainment companies or have these people start their own companies and have them, you know, be shareholders within these labels. Now they did say that they are appreciative of Isuman and how he really was like the founder of k-pop how he has this legacy now this is all the language you know basically being like we're gonna cut off your head <laughs> in a very respectful tone now this is this is how a coup d'etat works in korea in some ways where you know if it's not like a military one and if you know if it's like your own family and so they're saying like oh you know we respect you you know this is like such a, a great evolution and they were also saying like how you know people might be concerned that well are we going to lose that whole sm identity and they're saying like no we're going to still have that sm standard there's going to be a separate music selection and our committee made up of the chair uh, chair who's going to be the nephew and representatives of each of the units and they're going to kind of like be the think tank of SM Entertainment to make sure that there's some sort of SM style or SM kind of feel or like the the zeitgeist of the SM artistry and so that's going to be the SM uh, stamp but it's still going to be a little bit like kind of cutting out Isuman <laughs> because it seems as if they got really tired of Isuman being the sole executive producer you know like his way or the highway because they closed this whole 20 minute presentation by saying although the executive producer agreement has been terminated basically like the agreement with the production company headed by Isuman we express our sincere gratitude towards him who will and he will continue to support our company as a shareholder. So they're basically saying like, just keep your shares, buddy. And, you know, maybe get a dividend or two. So Isuman just returned to Korea from a trip overseas. Apparently he fractured his arm. That's what he said to the media. And he went to the hospital for treatment. Probably gonna hole up there. Do some kumbaya, hatch a plan. And then try to rally his troops already he has tried to signal that there is dissent in the company by getting one of his supporters in the company to blast out a company email saying like this whole takeover is wrong this is not right but it looks like his contra may be limited and this may be more of that grandstanding and again this 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 type of battle the way that the his modus operandi we may have turned a leaf it may not work because the, these guys who are in their 40s it seems like they really did their homework and they have really got the leverage and really have in you know hey in korea and in business you know the money talks and shareholders talk and they were really really strategic in in leading with the message the co-ceos the people taking over saying that it's going to be led by shareholders and fans and without the shareholders money and fans the customers i mean basically what they're trying to do is isolate isuman and saying like well isuman what do you have if you you know if we have the shareholders we have all the fans what do you have but you know like your opinions that people you know don't really you know want to hear and on a final note i don't know if i really wanted to bring this up but i feel like in 
terms of full disclosure, not that it's like a big thing to uh, disclose, but a brief little brush up I had with this situation and not even really with this situation is that remember the whole interview that I did with ABC News about the whole BTS military enlistment? The bureau chief here in Seoul, she's a very nice lady, but she is like the girlfriend of Isuman. So yeah, there's that that's kind of a connection, but in a little bit of a controversy uh there because there was a lot of hoopla made, you know, whether, you know, for better or worse, basically uh, over, you know, and, and this is Isuman's money. I mean, he could do whatever he wants with it, but apparently he bought her like a $5 million apartment. I don't know, you know, that that's what, that's what the uh, media was, was reporting. And so that is something that would probably make the employees feel bad. You know, if the employees were feeling like they, have no ownership stake royalties they're underpaid they're overworked and then they see that this production agreement continues to funnel money and he's able to do stuff like that then i'm sure they got a little bit mad plus uh the uh the bureau chiefs uh, the girlfriends um uh, niece is one of the ESPA members and there was like you know debates over like you know should she have been chosen um over some of the other uh SM trainees that were waiting in the wings and so whether that's true or not like you know like maybe she did deserve to be you know in ESPA and maybe he definitely you know, is not using money that could go to the employees. This is his own money to buy, you know, his girlfriend, whatever he wants to buy. But the perception, and this is a thing, you know, with, with, uh, definitely like, if you want a tip, I always say like in, in Korea, in, if you want a revolution, if you want a revolution, you got to make people feel it in their stomach with either like a house or a job or like somebody's, you know, kid getting more than yours. And so there were two elements in, you know, in that part of the story where it looks like it could have been like, wow, you know, and he's just like going around now and doing that. And so I could see how that really was kind of like the final straw internally where they were probably able to really solidify anybody who was probably like on the fence because there's a lot of people who you know know a lot in a situation like this I'll tell you there would be a lot of people they're just like kind of like mm, by like like oh I don't know if I should oh I don't know if I should join this revolution well I don't know if I wait until the last minute and what brings them over the edge? Oh, that sounds, that is hard. You know, like that part, that, that bring, that brought down President Park. And so now it seems as if that brought down the founder of K-pop. So what do you guys think? I mean, do you think that this is a sad day in K-pop? Or do you think that this bodes well for the future of K-pop? And you're going to get a lot more artists. You're going to get a lot more albums. And you're going to get a more stable K-pop industry that rewards its workers more fairly. I'm a bit hopeful. And it seems as if maybe we can, you know, be hopeful in this vision and we'll have to see whether they also uh, make good on their word. Well, honey, at the very least, it is a K-drama, Korean-style Game of Thrones in the K-pop industry right now. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.